when we are in the midst of grief, managing our personal space and our emotional energy is one of the most crucial things that we can do. So in today's video, I want to talk about setting boundaries when you're grieving. So how do we go about setting boundaries when we're grieving? Stay tuned. As we all know, grief can make us feel vulnerable and overwhelmed and emotionally freaking exhausted, right? Setting boundaries helps protect our energy and allows us to grieve at our own pace and not someone else's and also helps us deal with those well-meaning but sometimes intrusive people <laughs> that are, you know, helping with our grief, but then also causing more stress on top of that. Okay, so maybe you know that you need some better boundaries in your grief, but you don't know how to go about getting them. The first place to start is just examining what you need personally. So it's kind of like self-reflection. Stop and think about what you need the most right now. Do you need alone time? Do you need space? Do you need to just chill on your sofa and be alone for a while? Or is it the opposite and you need to be around people? Or maybe you need to be around people to socialize, but you don't necessarily want to talk about your grief because you want your social time to be a respite from dealing with those feelings constantly on your own. Recognizing your own needs is really the first step. Once you figure out what you need comes the hardest part, and that is learning to communicate your boundaries. Now, I am the first one to say that I have been terrible with this my entire life, and it's something that I am still working on. I'm a textbook people pleaser. I have a serious problem. But I'm happy to say that since my daughter died, I have gotten much better at being able to set boundaries with people, learning how to say no to people. And I'm hoping a little bit of that can rub off on you too in this video. I can't just say no. So communicating your boundaries can be really challenging, but it is really, really essential. So you kind of just need to practice learning to say things to people and maybe come up with some of your own phrases that sound like you. So you might not say exactly what I'm saying here, but you can come up with some sort of variation on it. So say someone asks you to do something or take part in something, and you just don't have the energy to do it, or you don't really have the desire to do it, you need to learn how to say no, but you can do it in a nice way. Like, I really appreciate that you are trying to help me, or I really appreciate you inviting me to that but I really don't think I'm up for it right now. Or maybe I really appreciate your concern. It does not go unnoticed, but I would really prefer to have some time alone right now. You want to try to be as clear and direct as possible. So maybe if you are doing something social and someone brings up your loss, you could say something like, I appreciate you asking. I'm just not really in the mood to discuss that right now, but maybe we could do it another time. Or I'm finding it really challenging to talk about my loss right now, so maybe we could talk about something else. It's going to feel weird and awkward the first couple times that you do it, and it's probably going to feel really weird and awkward practicing it on your own, but it really does help to actually kind of get some phrases in your mind and then use them when those kind of situations come up. Now, asking or communicating your boundaries is really difficult. What gets even more difficult than that is when you get pushback on your boundaries. And inevitably, you probably will have some people that give you a little bit of that pushback. Not everyone is going to understand or respect your boundaries, and that is okay but you need to learn how to be firm with people and how to just say what you need to say again as many times as you need to until they get it through their heads. Having boundaries, you need to understand, is not a sign of you being unreasonable. And I'm gonna say that again. Your needs when you're grieving are not unreasonable. 
They are what you need and that is okay. So stand firm in whatever boundaries you've set and repeat them as many times as you need to. And if you still have someone who just is still not respecting those boundaries, then you might need to separate yourself from that person for a while. I think we need to take a break. I've talked about this in another video and I will leave a link to it at the end. But social media boundaries are super important when you're grieving. So if you find that social media is making you feel a certain way, and it's probably not a good one, please take a break and set boundaries with how much you are checking your Facebook or Instagram or whatever you are going on that keeps hitting you with memories and seeing what other people are doing. That can be really, really tough. So consider setting boundaries when it comes to social media. That's just kind of like a side tip on boundaries. <laughs> setting boundaries is really all about taking care of yourself and giving yourself what you need and making sure that you are not doing things that are not good for your healing at the moment. It doesn't mean that these boundaries are going to be your boundaries forever. Um, I know personally, there are... <laughs> I have problems when people ask me to do things, I immediately say yes. And I don't really take the time because I feel bad. I want to make everyone happy. So I just agree to do things. I am a people pleaser, people. And then sometimes I'll start to find out what things entail. And I'm like, holy crap, like I do not, I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. And I will politely, I've learned to politely kind of extract myself from those situations. And I've gotten much better at saying like, I'm sorry, I just don't have the time to do that right now. I would love to help you. But right now I just can't because it would be too stressful for me. In essence, you just need to recognize that like what Megan Devine says, it's okay to not be okay. And you don't have to meet anyone else's expectations about what you should be handling at the moment. Setting boundaries, in essence, is an act of self-care. It is caring about yourself and your own needs. It allows you to honor your feelings on your own terms and to navigate your journey with a little bit more ease. Remember, your needs are valid and protecting your space and your energy is a right, not a privilege. So take it easy on yourself. Only do what you can do I have found people will understand. So don't be afraid to tell people if you need to set those boundaries. Just make it clear. You've got this. If you have personally set any boundaries on your grief journey, I would love to hear about them in the comments and let other people know if you think this is a good idea, or if it's worked for you, if you're having trouble, maybe we can help each other out. So comment below. As always, if you like the video, I would love it if you would subscribe and I will leave the link to the other video that I was talking about earlier about detoxing and detaching and setting boundaries with social media. I'll leave that linked here at the end. If you haven't watched that one, you can head over there and watch that one next. Until next time, I will see you guys next week. Sending love and hugs. Bye.